An enduro is a cross-country ride through all kinds of different terrain and you're trying to maintain a speed schedule. To do this, you have to be able to transverse all kinds of terrain. During the event, there are time checkpoints, which are called secret checks. And they check, they, uh, check you in on a time schedule. If you arrive there on time, you have zero points. If you arrive there too early, you lose points. If you arrive there too late, by a minute, you lose points. The object of the game is to stay on schedule and virtually impossible in most cases. It was one of the worst experiences of my life and I only made it around once. It took about six hours. I think it took me three or four enduros before I finally finished one. So when I started talking about wanting to race an enduro, didn't know what I was getting myself into. I think it took me like two years to finish one. These guys were really putting themselves to the test physically and they put their machines to the test and they have to make sure that their machines endure not just their bodies. And then there's the mental aspect that I find very interesting. They have to focus, they have to recover immediately if they've had a a fall or if something goes wrong with their bike. They have to put it behind them and then immediately go to the next challenge. All those pieces together make this sport spectacular, I think. Don't look at a tree and go, don't hit that tree because you're going to hit that tree. You pick up the bike or you push it out of the way and you keep going and then you have to remember, you know, well, I should breathe. You can, you can get hurt and it can hurt for a long time. Enduros, are, they're really a challenging type of event. Uh, you really got to dig deep. At the end of a race when you're thoroughly, physically and mentally spent. I think you're a good rider if you can finish an enduro. It's a test between you, the clock, and endurance. Enduro. When you're done with a hair scramble, when you're done with an enduro, you have had your fill of riding for the day. I couldn't, I couldn't believe I had done such a stupid thing, but you know, the next time we heard of another one, we were there doing it again. You know, riding, riding is my life. You know, I love it. It's my family, it's my friends, it's what I've done my whole life. That's what I like about Enduros, it's a challenge. It's, it's an adventure. What I didn't count on was the camaraderie of all the people, um, whether you're a C rider or a B rider or an A rider, everybody will, will help you, they'll answer questions if you have them. You're not thinking about work, you know, you're, you're not thinking about other stuff, you just, you're focused on riding, having fun. You're, you're pretty charged up, um, adrenaline's going, and uh, you're just, you're excited to get going, uh, nervous at the same time. I don't know, almost an escape from reality. And you're going to get a lot of saddle time with your bike. It's one of those things that I really feel like I've accomplished something once I've, I've done it. They all have interesting stories to tell. Um, range in professions and careers and business owners, etc. So it's just very cool to bring all those different types of people together on the weekend with a common goal. It's about um, the individuals, the writer, a, a challenge for themselves, something that they need to accomplish, something that, you know, like, I did this, you know, I've been through all this hard stuff. Everybody out here just loves to write, and it's a passion sport. I sing songs. When you're out there riding and you're riding as fast as you can, you have to stay concentrated on what you're doing. Once I get into the zone of riding as fast as I can, then my mind starts to drift and I think about other things, but that's when I do best. When you have the rhythm, I mean, there's just nothing like it. I just gotta keep up with the first place guy. If I can just hang with him, then I'm doing great. That's all I'm thinking. If it's an event that's more flowing and fast, 
and left, right, left, right, left, right, such as Huntersville, for instance. I've ridden that one for so many years, you get hypnotized. I'll go to an enduro, um, park my camper, my kids dive out of the car, and they go chase after everybody else's kids, and the next thing you know, it's dark, and all you hear is kids screaming and hollering and playing and having a good old time, and, and I have a real good comfort level with that because, you know, I grew up doing it. It's a safe place to be. It's all good people. You know, it's a good, safe environment. This is our second family, we call it. We have our regular family, and then we have our racing family. And I think that everybody can get together, even though the riders are out there individually, the aspect of everybody coming together to help everybody out, I think, is what the family is all about. The whole family goes. Uh, kids have a good time on the way home. They tell me every turn and twist and log and the rock about on the trail. The reason we started riding off-road is to keep the kids uh, interested in doing something, give them something to look forward to. You know, all the boys have raced at one time or the other. He tries to help me out in every way as possible, try to get me to be a better rider, training, fitness, eating. You know, you go reach for a brownie, he's like, ah, 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 no. At the races you get to push each other, like you can be like, you know, it's like, oh, you, you were really riding well today. It's a total bonding experience. I mean, if somebody crashes, they stop, you okay before you go on. Uh, you pass somebody, they pull over, you say thanks. When you're racing with somebody every week for 10 or 15 years, you're my brothers and sisters and you're my family. It's just basically almost a large extended family. And I'm, I've done it long enough now that it's hard to leave, you know, because it's like leaving your family. I started racing when I was uh, 14. I started when I was five. I rode a Mini Enduro in 1982. 13 years old. A Honda 90cc road bike, which was made into a trail bike by my brother. It was like one of those old stories where he had the baseball lot next to him. Well, I had a motorcycle track next to me that I made. First there was like only three kids events in the year and it just kind of snowballed. They're like the Resh Keys, how there's, you know what, Three generations of them. We got them racing at four years old. First race was Monticello Air Scramble. I was three or four. I mean, he's making us proud, no doubt about it. He's he's uh, doing really well out there. Well, it's just kind of fun because you're riding with riders and kids that share your passion. And so Mike and Scott have always done it, and now Colton and Cora are doing it, and I think they all enjoy it. It's really, yeah, it's really special to have them uh, doing the, the activity, and we're all there on Saturdays and Sundays watching. Their, their piece of it too. I was you know, a 16 year old kid, they said you can come riding with us but you gotta keep up. My kids wash their own bikes, I teach them how to change their oil, I teach them how to change their air filters. It's, it's, it's also the future, I think, of the sport. You know, you go to these youth events and you see the enthusiasm of the kids and their parents and so it, it makes you think there's, there's hope, you know, it's, it's pretty encouraging to, uh, to see these young people out there doing it because it's such a great activity. Hopefully they'll Someday grow up and have kids of their own and they're going to try it too, so if it's still going on. I think the challenges we're looking at are land use issues, you know, there are less and less areas where we can ride and race. The hardest thing we're going to see is, is land use. Between land closure and, and access, there's always a noise problem and we, we Trying to get that under control by people having quiet exhaust pipes. I think we have to make them quieter. Eventually we're going to get to a point where it's harder and harder to put in new trail. Well, land closure issues are certainly an issue. We're pretty good at taking care of the areas we race. You know, if it gets tore up, we'll reroute trail, we'll maintain it, we'll put things in to make it so it doesn't get bad. They know that all we're in there to do is try to improve the trail system and, and uh, make it a better uh, experience for the riders. I see the future is there's going to be more private property uh, ownership to where these clubs can hold the events on private property. I think that they're still amenable to having good trail systems and so it will work. It will just take more time and it'll be a little bit more rigorous.
I look at guys that are still doing it that are 60, 65, 70 years old. Don Youngdahl is my hero. Guy 72 or whatever and still doing it. That's fantastic. A guy like Bob Swift, who's you know been doing it for a long time, still competitive and heck of a nice guy. Uh, I plan on riding as long as I can. I look to people like uh, Steve Reschke, who's in his 60s now. Amazing how uh, at his age he can still go out there and ride competitively and, and does a pretty good job of it. He's uh, he's definitely an inspiration to me. I look at that and say, okay, if he can do it, I can do it too. We have a rule amongst us that, uh, an unspoken rule, that you can't make any major decisions until at least two days after an enduro. Because if you did, there'd be a lot of bikes for sale cheap Sunday night and Monday and maybe even Tuesday. So if you, you have to wait till Wednesday and then you can make any decisions. But about that time, you're starting to think, you know, where's the race next week? You know, uh, oh, what do I got to do to get the bike ready? Is it going to rain? Do I need tires? Do I, you know, I better go.